this is ericmothersmother.com let's take a look here and we're going to be taking a look at the need to look left and this is a need to look left on your charts let me explain so here's a couple of breakouts the first one is gopro we can see gopro was breaking out early over the last earlier over the last couple of months so we can say we can use this monthly closing high there we can use this monthly closing high all of these are valid it just depends on where you catch up with the breakout and there is a monthly closing high here that gives you another opportunity all of these are valid entry points just depending on where you start following this breakout so all of these are valid now i'm talking about the need to look left and i'll explain that in a second so we need to understand what has gone on before the breakout compare this with let's take a look at our chart here different one here also breaking out over the last couple of months and it's too meets the minimum requirements by the way i should have mentioned both of them meet the minimum requirement that we look for, that being the ultimate more the breakout now in this example if we look left we see something that is very different from looking left here i hope you can see it so one of them has an issue when you look left that the other one doesn't so this one doesn't have the same issue and what i'm talking about is overhead supply what I mean by that is here we can see if we go and take a look at all the data by looking left, go backwards and see how much data there is. And we see that, oh gosh, unless you're new to the market, you might not be aware that this instrument was trading as high as 95 in 2014. In fact, I'm sure some of you remember when this instrument took off when it IPO'd here in 2014, one of the best moving instruments for this time period before the eventual collapse now there's a problem with this chart and it, again as i mentioned overhead supply is a big issue for breakout stocks because they just have a lot of baggage and what i mean by that is so assume you bought the stock here or let's say you bought it here or 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 here so assume you bought it higher and you've been patient, man. You cannot believe how much of a loss you've taken. Now, remember, we're talking losses up to, let's call it what, this 80%, maybe more from here to here, huge losses, 50%. So people have taken big losses and they've been patiently, patiently, I mean, patiently waiting. You know what they're waiting for? Opportunity to get out even. Just get out where you got in. They want to get out. And all these are natural sellers. They are all natural sellers. All of these entries, is somebody just cannot wait to sell that stock if it ever comes back to the purchase price. So the problem with breakouts when you look left and they have this previous big drop is overhead supply these are natural sellers they're going to slow down the movement of the stock yes yes eventually stocks do manage to gather enough momentum and build and the reason why three years is essential hence my method is some of these people waited to get out they waited here it never recovered they waited here never recovered waited here never recovered here never recovered here never recovered so what happens is as you go on as more and more time is added since the purchase they give up and so they sell slowly begrudgingly but they get out so the longer the base sometimes it can be the the best formation for a big move to the upside Again, the reason being that all of this who are trying to hold, they, they try to hold, but it became too much as a psychological punch and they decided to throw in the towel. So by the time the stock starts building again, a lot of these natural sellers gave up a long time ago and they are no longer in the stock. They took their losses, licked their wounds and they're gone. So the stock can have an opportunity of moving higher. So sometimes this is a reason why long bases long base formations tend to be more successful 
because you get rid of these natural sellers who have seen huge losses. Because if the stock had recovered immediately, let's say the stock bounced lower here and recovered, they would start selling right there. If it bounced from here, this would become natural sellers. If it bounced here, they would become natural sellers. But if it takes forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever and you check again, nothing, losses, 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 losses. All of this process, actually, if you just think about the day to day to day, this is a monthly chart, people, going back many years. You're talking about 2015, 16, 17, 18, 19. Now we are towards the end of 2020. So all of this can be frustrating. And actually what happens from a momentum standpoint is it gets rid of other people who cannot stomach this stock anymore, which gives this stock free ability to see higher prices. But it's not the same as this. This is different. <laughs> there are zero natural sellers, zero. In fact, we can say as of today, everybody is excited, thrilled, cannot sell. Why would you sell? And this is why I keep saying it is sometimes a good strategy to always make sure you have some IPO exposure because when they move, they move. Remember, they have no natural sellers. Everybody is making money. By the time the stock is trading here, we can say 99% of the holders are seeing a big move. Everybody's happy. Nobody's dumping the stock, right? So it's always good practice to look left. How many natural sellers are there? That can distinguish between one stock and another, which by the way might explain, take a look at this stock and something I've been talking about recently is yesterday, the stock was up as much as 35, 34%. That's yesterday alone. Today at the highs, it was up an additional 27%. So yesterday, it gained 34%. And today at some point, at the highs of the session, was up. So one of the reasons why an instrument is able to explode like this is because no natural sellers. And again, the only way a stock can go from being sideways, this is a huge sideways base, right? Doing nothing for the entire 20, 20 year. And then suddenly it starts moving with a lot of power, right? And the only way it can become a leadership stock is by big, making big steps. Remember that. An instrument is going to only be a leadership stock if it picks big steps. You can't do it by 2% every day. At some point, you have to pick up momentum. And so the leaders tend to have these massive daily moves. And that's why I keep saying it's always good practice to understand which instruments are moving on a day-to-day -day basis. The best ones tend to repeat. Why? Why do they repeat? Because the only way they can become leadership stocks is by taking huge steps huge steps pull back huge steps this is the only way big steps that's that's the only way the average stock on the other hand is gonna be at best moving up two percent down one percent up another 1.7 percent down 0.1 percent up so they just tend to have these types of charts sideways but the best ones don't wait for nobody so don't be scared of seeing massive daily moves. That's where the action is. Oh, and by the way, on this chart, I hope you can see the Moade Virgin breakout. We have flat moving averages here. So I'm digressing a little bit, but here's an example of a Moade Virgin breakout. This is your pivot, your buy point, the daily closing high above that flat 50-day moving average. When it moves above that, Take a look at this behavior. This is the only way, the only way you can have a crossover between the 50 day and the 200 day. There's only one way. It needs a massive price expansion. And this method, again, can also be used for timing very powerful moves. It takes advantage of 
what I call a flat moving averages. Links are going to be in the description. I call that the more divergent the breakout. Now, one other thing, and I'm going to use a different stock here now. Take a look at this instrument. At some point in August, was trading at 15. At some point in August, went as high as 85. So, 15, 85. Remember when I was saying the need to look backwards? Look back and see the behavior. Because what you see here, when you look back, is something was moving this stock over two weeks. Two back-to-back -back weeks. In other words, week number one was confirmed. This confirmation week and also the massive move from 15, give or take, to about 85 in two weeks. Something about this instrument is powerful. Somebody somewhere, some institutions, believe this stock is worth way more. And so by looking backwards, you understand that there is somebody somewhere who believes very strongly that this instrument is going to explode. And they have no problem, none whatsoever, holding this instrument in this sideways base. And they had no problem buying it right there. Why? Because they knew this was coming. Why worry about this when you buy it here when you know this is coming? So, by looking backwards, once you understand this power that took place here, you know that you should make sure any breakout as relates to this stock is one you should pay attention to. Because it has already shown you its hand. This is the market telling you. This, this doesn't happen every day. Not every stock is going to move from 15 to 85 in two weeks. These are special situations. So now, the question becomes, wait for it to form a base and pick your spot. Decide what your buy point on a breakout level is going to be. That's your base. The breakout should come somewhere here. That's your entry. Again, they need to look back. Remember, it's an IPO. There's something beautiful about IPOs when everything lines up. This is a market telling you be on the lookout. And hence the reason why I alerted subscribers about the breakout potential for this stock twice in November. As you can see here, again for paid clients. And back to the chart again. And now let's take a look at the daily because our entry point was actually higher. I believe this was the break. When I sent out the most recent breakout alert was in November, as you just saw. And the breakout level was a future breakout if it broke out above this daily closing high right here. So it seemed extended at the time, but you have to understand that the stock had already shown its hand. This movements here, two days, bang, and then bang. And also, by the time it's showing the potential to break out above this area here, you'll notice your RSI and MACDs. Since it's an IPO, we can use the daily, but you can see your RSI. Take a look at your MACDs. All of them met the minimum requirements for the ultimate Moade breakout. So, you can understand the power because this is November the 13th. And let's take a look now what it looks like. In fact, let me update that. You can see it's moving even higher. So, the need to look left. Do we have natural sellers? The need to look left. Do we have any sign that this instrument has something preparing? something in the works there's somebody somewhere some institution institutions know something how fresh is it now remember our entry was somewhere here i believe at about 77 that was the breakout level we were aiming for but you could have had other breakouts here as an example and take a look at your weekly chart. Look at how beautiful the RSI and MACDs look. This is exactly what we look for. Do you have a habit of looking left? Do you know 
what to look for when you look left? This is a necessary requirement if you want to get it right. Eric Mwadith Mwadith.com. Love, light, light, love. Namaste.